Okay, now we're getting into identifying blood vessels. So we're going to start in the thoracic cavity with arteries. Uh, first off, we have the brachiocephalic trunk branching off of the ascending aorta here. There's also, um, well, the other arteries branching off the ascending aorta are the left common carotid artery and the left subclavian artery. From the brachiocephalic trunk, you have the right common carotid artery and the right subclavian artery. So um, you can see the left common and the left subclavian arteries branch right off the ascending aorta, but the brachiocephalic trunk comes off the ascending aorta for the right side, um, for the right common carotid and the right subclavian. All right, moving on to the abdominal arteries. First off, we, uh, I, want, I always try to identify the largest vessel first. So this is the abdominal aorta here because it's in the abdominal cavity um, and it's the aorta. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the celiac trunk um, here and the trunk branches into three different arteries. So we have the left gastric if you remember, um, if you watched the tips and tricks video, gastric means stomach. So this goes to the stomach. Then we have the splenic artery. Again, tips and tricks video, splenic means spleen. So this one goes all the way to the spleen. And then we have the common hepatic artery. This artery goes to the liver, as it hepatic implies. Then we have the right suprarenal artery here. Supra means above and renal means um, kidney. So it's above the kidney. And if you didn't know, the gland that sits above the kidney is the adrenal gland. Okay. And then there's also the left suprarenal artery. Something I want you to notice is that the left suprarenal artery comes directly from the abdominal aorta to the adrenal gland, but the right suprarenal artery branches from the right renal artery here. Okay. And that's just because um, the abdominal aorta sits closer to the left side of the body. So it makes more sense for the left suprarenal artery to branch straight off of the abdominal aorta while um, the larger artery here, which is the right renal, gives way because um, it's closer, it branches into the right suprarenal. Um, okay, and then right here we have the left renal artery um, directly from the abdominal aorta. And then we have the right gonadal artery here. This one is the left, but it's not labeled. Um, and then we have the superior mesenteric artery. It comes right off the abdominal aorta and uh, mesenteric just means intestines so this this already goes straight to the intestines and so does the inferior mesenteric artery so superior is above inferior is below okay now we have the arteries of the head and neck so i'm going to start off with the brachiocephalic trunk here because that comes right from the ascending aorta and then we have the right subclavian artery. So branches, the brachiocephalic trunk branches into the right subclavian as well as the right common carotid. Um, the right subclavian artery then turns into the right axillary artery because it passes the axillary region, which is um, your armpit. Okay. And the it's important to note that the right vertebral artery goes um, into the foramen of the vertebra on the right side. Then we have the right common carotid, also branching off of the brachiocephalic trunk. And that branch branches into the internal and external carotid arteries. So common typically denotes an artery that will branch into an internal and an external, which we'll see again later. Okay, so here we take the right subclavian artery 
and then it kind of turns into this right axillary artery, which then branches into the brachial artery, because this is the brachial region, and the right radial, and radial, remember, is on the thumb side or the lateral side of the forearm, and the right ulnar artery, which is on the medial or um, pinky side of the forearm. Okay, and then last but not least, we have the right superficial palmar arch artery as well as the right deep palmar arch artery. So superficial just means it's closer to the surface, while deep means it's um, further into the body. Okay, these are just pictures showing you um, the branches of the celiac trunk here going, um, going out. So... <laughs> If you look at the left gastric artery, it's going here, and this is the stomach. And then we have the common hepatic here, branching towards the liver, and the splenic artery going towards the spleen over here. So these are just nice pictures. Um, and then you can see the superior and the inferior mesenteric arteries going to the intestines. Okay, so once again, we have a common artery. So this one is the common iliac artery, and it branches into an internal and external iliac artery. Um, this is, you guys don't need to know any of these branches of the internal iliac artery. Um, but I just thought it was a good visual to show you guys. But as we go further into the lower extremity, we're going to start off with the right common iliac artery again. And you know now that it branches into the external and internal iliac arteries. Uh, we're going to follow the path of the external iliac artery right now. So external iliac artery kind of turns into the right femoral artery. Femoral is just thigh. And then this turns into the right popliteal artery. Um, so make sure you orient yourself. This is the anterior view and the posterior view here. So popliteal is behind the knee. And then we have the right posterior tibial. Um, so tibia gives you the indication that it's that big bone in your, in your leg and it's posterior. So it's behind the tibia. And then um, kind of branches and comes out in the front here for the right anterior tibial artery, as well as the right dorsal artery of the foot. So dorsal in this case is the top of your foot. Okay, and then it also branches into the right fibular artery, fibular as in the fibula, so it's closer to the fibula. And um, there's the right medial plantar artery and right lateral plantar artery, and they come from um, that right posterior tibial artery. It's a branch. Okay. This is a nice picture of pretty much all of the arteries that you need to know. Go ahead and screenshot this if you want. Um, I'm pretty sure we've posted the slides as well. So. Okay, and I'm not going to go through all of these, but here is the um, distribution. Again, you can go through the PowerPoint for all of these. Okay, getting into veins now, we're going to start up again with the thoracic veins. We have the right external jugular vein, the right internal jugular vein, and the right vertebral vein. Um, all of these merge into the right subclavian vein, and the veins drain the tissue, correct? So um, that's why it almost looks backwards in how we thought about the arteries. So these all merge together in the right subclavian vein, which merges into the right brachiocephalic vein, and eventually the superior vena cava to dump into the right atrium. Okay, we should also point here, point out here the accessory hemizygous vein, the hemizygous vein, and the azygous vein. These are all a part of the azygous system. 
which is talked about in a different video. Okay, and then the abdominal veins, we have the right gonadal uh, vein here, and the left gonadal vein, as well as the right renal, and the left renal, the right suprarenal, and the left suprarenal veins. Now, it is important to know again that it's opposite to the arteries, right? So the right suprarenal vein drains directly into um, this nice big vein here, and the left suprarenal vein goes into the left renal vein. Okay, and then we also have hepatic veins all the way up here that are going to drain the liver. Okay, so veins at the head and neck. We have the right vertebral vein, the right internal jug jugular vein, the external jugular vein here, all draining in, well, and the axillary vein, sorry, the right axillary vein, and which turns into the right subclavian vein, and all of these drain into it. Eventually get to the right brachiocephalic vein, and lastly, the superior vena cava. Okay, I forgot to <laughs> animate that one. Okay, so all of these veins here, the deep palmar venous arch, and the superficial palmar venous arch, all drain into the radial and ulnar veins. These are the deep veins, and they drain into the brachial veins, which is also deep, which ultimately drains into the axillary vein. This is different than the superficial veins, like the basilic and the cephalic veins here, um, as well as the basilic vein at, up here, which eventually drains into that axillary vein um, to ultimately go to the subclavian vein here. Okay. Starting in the lower extremities now, we have the dorsal venous arch, as well as medial and lateral plantar veins. They drain into the fibular veins, so fibular close to that fibula, and the posterior tibial veins, which you can see here. The dorsal venous arch drains into the anterior tibial veins, and we have this small saphenous vein here, as well as the popliteal vein. So the popliteal vein is the largest. Um, on the back of the knee, but the longest vein that we have is this great saphenous vein. So it goes all the way up the medial side of the leg and thigh. Um, the popliteal vein turns into the femoral vein here, and which eventually drains and merges into the um, external iliac vein once it passes this inguinal ligament and turns into the comic, common iliac vein all the way up here. Um, something you should know is that there's also an internal iliac vein, um, but we're not going to get into the, the veins that specifically merge into that one. Okay, here's another um, little guy with all of the veins that you should know. Okay, and there's also more drainage schemes for you that will be available in the PowerPoint. Okay, something should be noted that you need to, when answering questions, you need to have right and left. Um, so let's say here, you would need to have the um, right great saphenous vein. Um, you also need vein or artery, because if you write right great saphenous, um, you could get points marked down if you don't include that vein. All right, that's all I have for you guys. Good luck studying. You could do it.